Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants update video. Uh, the Giants last night did make a move regarding the tight end position. They signed Washington commander tight end Ricky Seals Jones. Contract details aren't out as, as of yet. However, the contract he was with on Washington, I think was less than a million dollars, something around like 900,000. So I'm expecting this one to be around that area as well. Of course, this uh, does not change, in my opinion, what the Giants are going to do with drafting a tight end in a couple of weeks uh, or even a month from now, not a couple of weeks. I still think that we are in position to draft a tight end. And well, let's let's just talk about Ricky Seals Jones. First and foremost, I got an article here from the New York Post. I'll read to you guys. This is by Paul Schwartz unless it's pretty short. So let's get right into it. He says, the Giants went into free agency needing a tight end, given that they were not going to bring back Evan Ingram he signed with the Jaguars. They had released Kyle Rudolph and also parted ways with Caden Smith. After those subtractions, they added a player at the position Wednesday night when they agreed to terms with Ricky Seals-Jones, who joins his fifth team in, six, in his six-year career. Seals-Jones, 27, has 90 catches for 1,044 yards and 10 touchdowns in 54 games. He has played for the Cardinals, Browns, Chiefs, and Washington. In week two of last season, Seals Jones caught a 19-yard touchdown pass in the fourth quarter in a 30-29 Giants loss at FedEx Field, a game best remembered for Dexter Lawrence getting called for an offside penalty on a missed field goal by Dustin Hopkins in the closing seconds. Given a reprieve, Hopkins then hit the game-winning field goal as time expired. Real quick, of course, when we signed this guy, this was the thing I immediately thought of. He was that guy that caught the touchdown pass on that, um, it was like the 22nd drive or something crazy like that where washington got down into the field and scored in 20 seconds that was him um seals jones was a wide receiver at texas a&m and went on drafted he had a career high 34 receptions for the cardinals in 2018 he also had 30 catches last season at six foot five 243 pounds seals jones is more of a pass catching tight end than he is a blocker he played for the chiefs in 2020 when mike kafka the new giants offensive coordinator was the quarterback's coach and passing game coordinator in Kansas City. Now, this gives us a little bit of information here. Before I talk about it, I also want to um, show you guys what he did over the course of his career, and specifically last year. Last year, he was called upon by the Washington Commanders because Logan Thomas, uh, their starting tight end, went down during the season. Seals Jones then started six games for them, where in those six games, he had 49 targets, 30 receptions, 271 yards, and two touchdowns, one of them once again being on the Giants. Um, Definitely not his best year. Uh, like they said, his best year was in 2018 with Arizona when he had hit the most of his targets. And then before he could really do anything else for Washington, I believe that Ricky himself went down as well. They lost both of their tight ends last year. So yeah, he is he's somebody that um I can't believe that I'm making this comparison, but just because we our last tight end was a receiving guy, he's kind of like an Evan Ingram light, and I mean that only in the receiving sense. Um He's not as fast as Evan Ingram or anything like that, but he is pretty athletic. If you go and you look at what he's done in the past couple of years, you can see that he's also a physical run after the catch guy. Seems to be a reliable target. This is where I'm a little bit confused about because he has a good amount of drops in his career as well. But last year, there's nothing really that I noticed that's, for example, comparable to Ingram, right? There's nothing that's like costing the Washington games or he's dropping big third down catches or something like that. In fact, it's the opposite. There was a huge third and 20 um, that Washington faced and Seals Jones was the receiver that, that converted that third and 20 for them. Big pass from Heineke to him. He seems to be a serviceable tight end. And I guess that's the point I'm trying to get to. I don't think once again that we're done addressing the position, but walking into the season, if he's the starter, I'm not worried. Why do I say that? Because tight end is a position where it's like you're not required to have somebody great there, in my opinion, to have a good, well-oiled offense. I feel like it's kind of the cherry on top almost. I mean, we as Giants fans, we know that we haven't had like game-breaking tight ends before and have had successful teams. Whether you want to say the Super Bowl teams where we had uh, Jake Ballard as our tight ends one of the times or whether you even want to say the last time we went to the playoffs in 2016, we had Will Ty and Larry Donnell. Like, those guys are comparable to Ricky Seals-Jones. And I think Ricky Seals-Jones is just as good or even a little bit better than they were. So, I'm fine with him at our tight end position right now. He's serviceable, and that's all you need him to be. Um, If he's a starter, I'm all right with it. But I do think we're still definitely going to draft somebody. I, I don't want to 
people to think that maybe the Giants are done with addressing the position. And just a comment on what we've done in free agency so far. I'm not sure if anybody has noticed. Every single free agent that we've brought in has been from the offensive side of the ball. We haven't touched the defense in terms of bringing in new guys. Unless you want to count a restructure of Martinez. But it wasn't like he was a free agent anyway. So what does that imply? Um, something that I guess we've we as fans have kind of known already, whether it was subconsciously or or not even consciously, is that they're just gonna go heavy on defense in the draft. And I mean that's reflected in any type of mock draft you see for the Giants. Um, you look at my mock draft, it was kind of defensive heavy. It seems like they're gonna focus getting players there. You know, whether it's the edge, whether it's the corner, defensive tackle, you name it, they're gonna go and find them there. And it makes sense when you think about it as well. If you think on the offensive side of the ball, really the only big need that the Giants has was tight end because we didn't really have anybody on the roster. And of course, offensive line. And looking at the draft in terms of getting those, you really only need to spend two picks, maybe three at most out of the nine that we have. So yeah, defensive heavy. And speaking of the defense, a quick update on James Bradbury. Of course, he is still with the team as of right now. A lot of people, including myself, thought that we'd find out what was happening, how we got a little bit of this extra cap space. In fact, if you check, the Giants are actually 2 to $3 million under the cap. Joe Shane succeeded in getting us to that point before the deadline, which was 4 p.m. yesterday. I forget the official title for it. However, we're there. He's made good progress with the cap so far by, you know, making cuts um, and making pay cuts. Has really kind of stuck to his word in terms of kicking money down the road for existing players. He's... I think only did that maybe for Mark Lewinsky on the um, the backloaded contract, but that's not even really a restructure as it was, you know, just a backloaded contract. He was a new addition to the team, not somebody that was already here. But we'll still have to see what is going to be the situation with James Bradbury and the solution. James Bradbury is still with the team as of right now. If there's a way Joe Shane could somehow figure out to, you know, either give him a pay cut or restructure him so he, that he rema remains with the team going into the season, I'm sure all Giants fans will be happy about that. His trade market, the Raiders, they were a big player that I thought would have uh, made a move for him. They got Rocky Sin. They then went out and signed another corner. Maybe they're still a player. Maybe they still have space. They still want him. The Bills are also in the market for a, a veteran corner, according to several sources, saying that they're looking for somebody to start right um, opposite of Tredavious White. Of course, we already know the Bills connection. Maybe that's another place he could hit. But James Bradbury can be on the roster even all the way up until week one if they're still looking to move him because his the rest of his contract, I think he only um, maybe a million or two million has kicked in so far. The rest of it doesn't even kick in until week one. So from now, basically throughout the rest of the offseason, the Giants could take that wait and see approach if they want to instead of forcing a trade. Maybe they wait and a better deal comes up or maybe even um, like a lot of people have been suggesting, we'll see a draft night trade, uh, whether it's just straight up for a pick or you package Bradbury with something else or somebody else for a pick as well. But that's it for now, guys. Uh, hopefully more and more news will come out as free agency progress and we get closer to the draft. Uh, I'm happy about the Seals Jones signing. I think, you know, it was good, serviceable, and definitely very cheap. And we'll see how the Bradbury situation unfolds with more time. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.